Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this interview. And with me, I have no less than Kent Beck. But Kent, for those that don't know you, could you please present yourself? Sure. Uh, uh, thank you for the invitation to the conversation today, Thomas. Uh, my, my name is Kent Beck. I've been a geek since the early 70s. I grew up in Silicon Valley. My dad was an engineer. Uh, so I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I've written some books, uh, probably best known for signing the Agile Manifesto. I was one of those uh, 17 middle-aged white guys who uh, who wrote that and, and, and signed it, although I didn't write any of it. Um, <clears throat> My mission in the in the world is to help geeks uh, feel safe. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we as geeky people feel unsafe, sometimes in situations where we actually are safe, like a social situation. But sometimes we actually aren't safe and we feel unsafe because we're doing things that have negative consequences and, and we don't really... And kind of we know it, but, you know, like writing code with bugs. And so uh, uh, part of my uh, practice has been developing tools and techniques uh, around taking more responsibility for the work with, that we do. So uh, uh, JUnit is something I wrote with Eric Gamma, uh, Test Driven Development. It's a way of of feeling safe and secure in the work we do. And as a programmer, I must thank you very much for those tools. It's been well used, I must say. Um, okay, oh, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, you will be in this program called uh, Leading Complexity, and you will be talking. Oh, about... I'm excited! Yes, yes, it's great to have you with us. Uh, and you will be talking about the four factors model. Could you tell us a little bit about how you see complexity, how you define that, and what the four factors model will bring. Sure. So at an early extreme programming conference, we invited uh, uh, the dean of the School of Economics at the University of Trento, uh, a guy named Zaninoto, to come and tell us from an economist perspective why extreme programming might work, even though at that point everybody was saying, no, this couldn't possibly work. And he presented this model and it took me probably 15 years to, to understand what he had told us, but uh, I have found it very helpful since then. So you get into a complex situation, one where you kind of don't know what's going on currently and everything that you try makes things worse. That kind of situation doesn't emerge at random. It's a confluence of and these are the four factors that Professor Zanonoto presented. <clears throat> and the four factors are, uh, uh, so you've got this system and it has lots of elements. And uh, one of the factors is there's interdependencies between the elements. So if something happens here, the consequences flow to one or multiple others of the elements, and then the consequences of that flow to others. So you've got these interdependencies. The second factor is that each of those elements could be in many different states. So it's difficult to predict without understanding all the details. It's difficult to predict, well, if this happens here, what exactly is going to happen here? And then because it could be in many different states and then depending on what happens there, different consequences are going to flow. So already the picture's starting to get fuzzy. The third factor is that there's variation externally, the inputs coming into this system and internally. So the elements don't always act exactly the same way, uh, even if you precisely knew their states. So things are changing all the time. These effects are rippling through the system in unpredictable ways. And then the last factor, the fourth factor is irreversibility. And this is where uh, uh, you can break it, but you can't ne necessarily fix it. So you make some change to the system, everything just falls apart, and you can't just uh, unfix it. So if you're in a situation that's 
complicated that where you're getting unintended consequences and you have all four of those factors present, you're out of luck. There's nothing that you can do to kind of bring that system back into even some sort of dynamic equilibrium. So in the case of extreme programming, the, it's the fourth factor that we address. Uh, uh, software development before that was very irreversible. You do an analysis document, and that was exactly the system that you were going to build, even if you made mistakes. And then you'd build a big design document, and that was exactly the system that you were going to build, even if you made mistakes. Or you made all these irreversible decisions. In extreme programming, if you discover if the subtitle is embrace change, you discover that this isn't the system you want, you want that system, you can just change. So very few of this of the decisions in an extreme programming project are irreversible, are set in stone, and you, you can't change them. And that means that even though there's variation, there's interdependency, and there are many states, you can still try experiments and steer this complicated thing in the directions you'd like to go. So that's the four factors model. You have interdependencies, you have many states of the elements, you have variation coming from the outside and from the inside, and you have irreversibility. So when I'm in one of these situations, the first thing I wanna understand is, are all four of those factors present? And if they are, like, software development in a gigantic bank, for example, all four of those factors are going to be present. I can't just fix that problem by doing a little bit better job. I need to address one or more of those factors before I can have any hope of having a positive effect on the system. Does that answer your question? Uh, absolutely, it will. Um, but it also raises my curiosity. Um, okay, so you gave the answer. Uh, if you're in that situation, you should be using extreme programming. Um, so could you, I, I understand that if you want to know the long answer to this, uh, you should participate in the leading complexity and, and listen into your session. Uh, but do you have some advice, some shorter answer uh, for leaders, especially focusing on leaders in this case, um, that are having a couple of teams and uh, feeling we really we have a check in the box for all those four uh, factors. What what should they do? Well, uh, address one or more of them. So, uh, for example, uh, extreme programming tends to work at the scale of 10, 20, 30 people. Um, what do you do if you have a thousand people developing software? Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, in, in a thousand person organization, oftentimes there'll be teams and kind of organizations of teams and there'll be interdependencies between the teams. And it's those interdependencies between teams that cause a lot of the problems. Now, people, people uh, it, introduce those interdependencies for reasons that make sense to them in the moment. Like, okay, so we have a security team and we're gonna do all the security work in the security team and everybody's gonna be dependent on the security team. Well, what's gonna happen next is that the security team is gonna be a bottleneck for anybody else. If anything goes, if any of that variation happens within the security team, the, you know, the, the leader leaves or uh, an important individual contributor goes to, to another part of the company or somebody just gets sick or there's a glitch in a project, the results of that are going to be felt in the entire organization. So it, at scale, if you, if you introduced in, interdependencies to achieve economies of scale or, or whatever good reason made sense to you, you're in that state where all four factors are present and you might need to to detune your organization you might have to make things well actually you always have to make things worse that's one of the the sad facts of the world is things always get worse before they get better so you may have to make things a little less efficient micro efficient in order to remove the dependencies that aren't serving you 
in order to make larger macro gains. So uh, the, the, uh, th there's a profound responsibility in leadership to look at the larger picture out of all the little pieces and say, not just push, a lot of, uh, uh, th there seems to be this model that leadership is about pressure and, and, and pressure actually makes things worse and reduces the amount of honest feedback that you get. So you're less prepared to deal with your problems. And I'm I'm advocating a style of leadership that says, no, no, if you've got all four of these factors present, figuring out which one you can reduce is your job as a leader. Nobody's gonna come up with that, you know, down in the middle of the of the chaos. It's your job to see okay, we're we're playing a game we can't possibly win. We need to change the rules of the game. Very interesting. Um, my, my feeling is that it's very common that, especially when scaling up, uh, leaders have a tendency to actually make it worse. They, they are uh, putting people in silos. Uh, they are introducing um, platforms that is not really helping and... Uh, especially and then saying you are only focusing on this and you should only be focusing on that kind of uh, so creating the dependencies even so kind of making it even worse no, and, and not because anybody's evil or stupid no the, the, they're trying to achieve goals uh in an environment though in which it's impossible yeah, they, they are. I'm I'm quite sure that they are making this because they believe that it it makes it simpler. Uh, sure, I I call that the legibility fallacy. If uh, yeah. it's if it's easy to glance at and think you understand, then it's good. <laughs> exactly. And we're dealing with a profoundly human activity, and if you if you think you understand it fully, you're definitely fooling yourself. So many wise words. Um, so uh, these and, and more to come <laughs> if you pay to sign up for the. <laughs> exactly what I was uh, about to say. So thank you very much for filling that in for me. So uh, great having you in the program. Great having this conversation. I'm very much looking forward uh, to hear the full long version of uh, you telling us more about your wisdom when it comes to uh, this four factors model and how to lead in complexity. So. Thank you.